Hello and welcome to another edition of our HLI Ireland's Let's Talk series. Last week we began talking about IVF and we've obviously had a lot of reaction to that video and we're delighted that people are trying to um, wrestle with church teachings but we're also very conscious that sometimes hearing these teachings can cause pain and confusion and even anger. So we wanted to take a step back and say where, where has this come from? Is this HLI Ireland's opinion? Or is this coming from the church, from Jesus Christ himself? So you will remember from last week that we um, quoted very many numbers from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And um, that may be new for some, and some of you may be familiar with the Catechism. So today we wanted to discuss what the Catechism is and why we should pay attention to what she teaches. So I'm delighted to have a special guest with us today. We have Father Owen Gorman from the Clotter Diocese, who's coming to, um, on to help us unpack a little more and open up the discussion and to, to church teaching. So you're very welcome, Father Owen. Thanks very much, Lisa. Lovely to be with you. Okay, so Father, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, what, what is it? Yeah, the Catechism is really uh, the one-stop shop when it comes to all of the, uh, what the church teaches in terms of faith and morals. It's really an education in the faith. And it's an education not only in the doctrine of the faith, what we believe as Catholics, but also in the moral life that we are called to uphold as disciples of Christ. It's an education also in prayer because it takes like the Our Father and, and teaches us the whole Christian tradition of prayer. And it is just a, it is a wonderful resource for us just to to, to bring our hearts and our minds to in order to help us to understand what we believe and why we believe it as, as, as Catholics. So uh, in addition to the Bible, it's one of those books that each of us should have. So Father, um, it, it does sort of break down, as you said, the prayer and a lot of what the church teaches, even through um, church documents over time. How mm. would you describe its link with scripture then? Well, really, it, scripture is the source out of which the catechism flows because, uh, you know, uh, we, we come from the word of God. We are, our teachings are born from the word of God. And what I mean by the word of God is not only the Old Testament teachings before Christ, but Christ, who is the word of God in flesh. So when Jesus became, uh, came to this world, he, 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 he spoke not only for God, he spoke as God. So he gives us the fullness of the truth, the fullness of the revelation. And all of his teachings were, first of all, remembered orally, and then they were written down in written scripture, the Gospels, the letters of St. Paul, the New Testament writings. These became collected into then just the, the New Testament books of the Bible. And in addition to the, to the Old Testament books, this is, this is one of the modes of what's called God's revelation. God has shown himself to us over history through the Jewish people and, and then to all nations. And uh, the, the scriptures, the written scripture, provides the record of God's revelation of himself, his truth, and the way to life and the fullness of human flourishing. So uh, the catechism really uh, is based on a scripture. Uh, and our teachings come from the word of God. So they're not kind of human inventions or something that we may like to believe because it's popular or, or, or whatever, but it really is, is a reflection of divine truth. And it, as I said, is one of the great resources that we should always have as Catholics in our lives. Yes. So, I mean, it would be fair to say a lot of the the issues that we struggle most with at this time, well, the, the, the issues that are closest to the heart, closest to the bone marrow, as they say, are the issues mostly around sexuality, around marriage, around sexuality, around um, life, abortion, IVF. Those are the, the, the most challenging. And the catechism spells it out for us, as it were. So as Catholics, what you're saying is that this is Christ speaking through the church over time in a coherent manner and then giving us something that we can then take into our lives mm -hmm. and how would you say there was a quote that I, in conversation we were talking about before about 
um, the church's authority. Can you just uh, remind me of that quote about the church's authority and being the bulwark of the truth? Yeah, well, the church's authority comes from Christ himself. And so Christ, you know, chose the apostles and then he sent them out to teach in his name. And the apostles were really the first uh, bishops of the church. And uh, they communicated God's saving message to the world. And in, in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 15, St. Paul writes that the, the pillar and bulwark of the truth is the church. So what this means is, is that the church communicates the truth of God to us. Now, it's, it's not the truth about absolutely everything. It's, it's the truth in terms of, of, of what's called faith and morals. You know, what, what does it mean to believe authentically in God and God's revelation of himself, but also what is the correct way to live as human beings? And the church is, uh, has been given a mission that comes from Christ to communicate this to the world. And uh, she seeks to communicate with joy because this is a joyful message. This is a message that enables us to flourish. The issues that you, you mentioned, Lisa, the, the sexual issues, the, the moral issues that so many men and women in this day and age have stumbling blocks with, the church uh, gives definitive answers to those particular issues based on a profound sense of the dignity of the human person, but also the will of God for ourselves as male and females and the proper use and the orientation of our human bodies. And it is in living that truth that comes from God communicated to, to the church that we begin to flourish as human beings. There's a lot of people sad out there that experience a great emptiness and um, a, a great sadness within themselves, even though you know, they may have gone you know, with so many of these practices of the ways of the world, they are empty and broken within. The church gives the remedy for that come back to the truth of Christ, live it, and then you will see how happy you can become, how great you become as a human being. So uh, the authority is from Christ, it is true, the successors of the apostles, the bishops, and we're not saying that any priest or any bishop is a perfect human being, we're not. There's a difference between what's called infallibility, which is um, uh, whereby God sustains us in the truth of faith and morals, and gives the church the ability to teach that definitively, there's a difference between that and impeccability. No priest, no bishop is impeccable. We are all sinners in need of God's grace. But God has given the charism to teach definitively right teaching in terms of morality and faith. And that is one of the reasons why it is always wise to listen to the Catholic Church on these issues. Yes, I think, I think what, what you said there was, was key when you said, you know, the church is promising this love and peace and it's inviting you to live it and then you'll see. So that takes uh, a great amount of trust. We talked about that last week. You know, that takes a step of trust and faith in the church before you can see why she might say that. And I think it was um, a Saint, uh, who's now the Saint uh, Henry Newman who talked about an ascent of the heart. And I know that when, I mean, I in the past, would have really struggled with church teaching. And I would even say that the church teaching saved my life in the sense that it was handed on to me through my parents. And, you know, it was the love of your parents and the love of the church that, that made you sort of go, well, this must be true because I know that my parents love me and I know that Jesus loves me, but I'm really struggling with it. Mm -hmm. But when, when you then assent to that with the heart and go, okay, I'm going to try and believe this and try because that's what it is it's it's belief without seeing isn't that what jesus we talked about faith mm -hmm. without seeing if you can believe it first then it's after that that all the clarity comes when you realize wow this really mm -hmm. does make sense mm -hmm. now i can see where the church what where she's coming from and where um you know what how this all fits together all of these very difficult issues and mm -hmm. Father, I've talked about she quite a lot. Is that correct to look upon the church as your mother? You know, if, if, if Christ called the church his bride, am I correct in looking upon the church as my mother? Or is that sort of something else? Oh, no, very much so. The, the whole mystery of salvation and the symbolism of is, is nuptial. Um, you know, uh, God as, as uh, comes to wed Israel in the Old Testament and, and Christ comes as the new bridegroom to take a, 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 the new bride to himself, the church. And uh, the last book of the Bible, Revelation, talks about the, you know, the wedding feast of the Lamb. So 
God wants to wed us in this life and uh, to, so that we may be with him in the life to come. But yes, the church is feminine. Uh, the church is mother. The church is bride. Our Lady is, of course, the great representation of that. Uh, and, um, and, and Christ been the bridegroom. So, um, you know, as a man, as a priest, I am forced to, to see myself in, in a feminine way as uh, Christ comes to wed me and I'm part of the, that whole kind of bridal relationship as well. It's easier for you women to enter into that symbolism. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, uh, it, it is a lovely reality and it's a truth for, for, for us all that Christ wants uh, that, that union with us, uh, body, soul, everything about us and he he comes at the door of our hearts and knock uh, to knock and you know the the reason why i think that if we open the door to him then uh, as you say lisa the 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 understanding then comes uh, if we follow him then we will know why these things are right and true and wise and good for us but we will never be able to figure out church teaching and ivf or contraception or abortion if we just simply enter into it as a, as, as a cognitive mental exercise, yes. if we live the life of the gospel, we will see the truth of the gospel. So it does take a commitment of, of, of living it. And then you begin to see this is so wise. It's so true because you experience within yourself the flourishing of God's life within you. When you live it and follow the Lord and put your trust in him, you grow within, you flourish within. God's kingdom comes within and the light of heaven shines through your mind and it shows you the truth of the gospel and the truth of church teaching. So I think that the first step has to be a step of trust, as you're saying. And, and you know, we come from a situation where, where a lot of trust has been broken. But hopefully, you know, through this, um, your wonderful HLI initiatives of these podcasts, hopefully it'll help people to build up a wee bit of trust once more and to take that step with Christ mm -hmm. uh, and putting faith in him and studying the teaching and asking for help. And I think that if anybody with sincere heart just says, well, listen, you know, Lord, I'm open to you teaching me, send me your Holy Spirit and uh, show me the way. And if with that openness and humility, uh, uh, we can receive uh, uh, a confirmation that what the church says is actually true in this. Yeah, I think um, it was, no, going back to, to quotes on this, I had one, oh, let's see if I've got, oh yes. Um, the, the catechism itself speaks to the assistance of the Holy Spirit and understanding, you know, the realities and contemplation and, and the study of believers to ponder these things in our hearts. So, you know, um, as a priest yourself, and you know, I'm obviously um, an ordinary lay person who is surrounded with family and friends who you really will the good for. You know, the, the reason we do what we do is not to hammer anyone. Um, you know, as I said, put off any, any you know truth bombs into their lives and then walk away. It's to mm. it's to share something with love. So, what would you say to um, to people who are struggling, and what would you say to people who want to help those who are struggling with the teachings of the church? Well, for those, first of all, who are struggling with the teachings, uh, I, I would certainly recommend take time with prayer. Um, pray to the Holy Spirit for, for assistance and light. Ask him to, to enlighten and to show you, uh, to, show, to show on the truth. Uh, so, so prayer is essential. In addition to prayer, we, we, have, to, we have to form our, our minds. So, so good, good theological, good resources, the catechism, good, good books, um, the lives of saints, uh, stuff like that can, can be a great resource to help. Um, so, and then I, I think that um, just, it, it, it's not just a kind of a solitary exercise of, of, of prayer yeah. and study, it's actually living it with a community as well and talking to the people who hold views different than yourself. Uh, so if, if one is for, for example, contraception or IVF, that you would talk to people who you know uh, actually hold a church teaching to inform your own conscience as to what they believe and why they believe it. That is an act of generosity and that is an act of charity. And you know, we should never be afraid of dialoguing with people uh, because we're meant to walk to the truth together and uh, we can all assist each other in that. Uh, you're right, we're, we're not there to you know, hammer people uh, over the head with, with, with um, 
with uh, catechisms or anything like that, but we just simply want to propose something that is true and good and beautiful and that can enable you to live a life that is so incredible and to get to heaven and to bring people there as well. And so what we're proposing is good. And, uh, but you know, sometimes when the light goes on, if, if we live in shadows or darkness, it, it can be blinding yes. and it can be painful yes. and we can reject it. But just uh, if we attune our eyes to the light, uh, we'll come to love the light. And I think yes. that through prayer and study and, and openness of heart, we, we can attune ourselves to a light that is, that is so beautiful and bright. It can, uh, it can transform us. Yeah, I think, I think in many ways, you know, what we're trying to do here through these podcasts, you know, it's not ideal for these very delicate issues. And all that we're trying to do is, is as we've, we've named the program, Let's Talk. You know, so if we can only be, you know, a seed for thought or a seed for a conversation between loved ones, that's where these most intimate and, and difficult conversations have to be had. And, and even those conversations have to be had between, between us and the Lord. You know, so if I'm dealing with something painful, I mean, I, I, I would tend to go to adoration because it's, it's me and him. And, and, and he knows the pain that I may go through. He knows the pressures, the stresses, the good wills, the good intentions. And he is so gentle and patient. Mm. You know, he's always there. I listened to a fabulous song. I'll maybe put a link to it. And it's saying that, you know, he's there all along, even when we are making mistakes, even when we are misguided. You know, he's always there and he's always leading and he's always guiding. And I know, you know, I can speak from part of the HLI team. We're only here to try and shed some light, open up some conversations. But it's really the grace, goodness and love and mercy of God the Father that can only come into the hearts. And, you know, that's just something we hope to aid. But it's, it's, it's very personal and very, you know, deeply mm -hmm. private, very often, um, very often issues. But as you said, we're also part of a community. So we have a duty to share where we can appropriately. Um, Father, just to finish off, um, I think you'd mentioned a book, a very good book that people could read. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show it here. It's, uh, it's by Dr. Janet Smith, and it's called Life Issues, Medical Choices. And I, I got this as, a, I think, when I was a seminarian, and it's uh, dealt with a lot of the... Uh, the issues that are really coming up for people in their lives in terms of Catholic sexual teaching, uh, beginning of life issues such as uh, why abortion is wrong, the treatment of embryos, reproductive technologies, uh, contraception, sterilization, natural family planning, end of life issues as well, and how we as Catholics are to find our way through this whole quagmire of, of issues. It, it's kind of a question and answer format for Catholics. Uh, Dr. Janet Smith is a, is a fantastic um, philosopher and a theologian, and I would really heartily recommend this just to everybody. It's accessible and it gives good answers, very compassionate, but full of truth. And I think people will find this a great resource. Father, uh, just another thing that came to mind just before we finish. Um, very many people are already deeply embedded in these issues. You know, they're struggling with them. It's not a case of past tense or future tense. They're right in the middle of these issues at the time. And some then maybe have issues in the past. Can you just finish off with some hope about the mercy of the church that, you know, that no one is excluded from, from, from Jesus himself, no matter where we've been or, or you know, what actions we may have, have committed? Oh, absolutely. You know, like, uh, um, I, I, I just want to kind of, maybe recommend um, not only the, kind of the study of these things, but also the healing of the heart. And as you say yourself, a lot of people have come through these issues that may be very broken or they may get a sense of, of the emptiness that, that is there because of certain lifestyle and choices and that. So as I say, the church is not there to exclude anybody, but to welcome everybody into the arms of salvation and the embrace of God's love. Now, uh, one of the great sacraments of healing of the church is the sacrament of reconciliation. Uh, we may think of uh, the sacrament of healing as the anointing of the sick, but what, one of the, the other great sacrament of healing is confessions, reconciliation. And, and you know what? It's, uh, it's something that as Catholics, it's important for us to discover because we all need healing. We've all made wrong choices. We've all gone down wrong roads. We've all been very broken in certain things. 
but um, Jesus just longs for us to come to, to that experience of his healing love through reconciliation. Uh, it does take humility to admit our faults, our failures, our sins. But uh, again, you know, it's the doing of these things, it's the living of, of this life with Christ, that when you do it, you feel as if a weight has been lifted, your heart has been healed, the emptiness is gone, and you have been transformed and touched by divine love. So, yeah, if, if people are kind of maybe living in fear of, of certain choices in the past or that, uh, the churches would always say, echoing scripture, do not be afraid. Uh, but that process of coming to wholeness once again, it does pass through the sacrament of reconciliation. So where the priest has the privilege to, to mediate uh, the mercy of God and where Christ is present. So um, just that's my word of hope at the end. Just Thank you. God's welcoming of all. Thank you so much, Father. Maybe we'll finish with a wee prayer if you maybe lead us just before we sure. conclude the recording. Delighted. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your love and your wisdom and the gift of your Son. Pour out your Spirit, we pray through your church, that she may be uh, a wise mother and uh, a light to all nations and help all of those who are unsure or doubtful to experience the guidance of the Holy Spirit and an increase in faith so that they may firmly believe the truths that will set us free. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. God bless. God bless you, Lisa. God bless you all. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are working and praying for an Ireland where God is first, life is sacred and the family is cherished. <laughs>